Yeah. We're down a mic. We're here to help you with your fitness business stuff. Um, yeah, it's about yeah, it's about as much attention as coaches give it. So we'll call yeah, it fitness business stuff. stuff. Um, we get, I, th I think these videos, this recording, obviously, because you guys know that it's done in some sort of batch, right? So you'll know from what clothes we're wearing, the ones that precede this one. Um, sorry, the ones after this. Um, Succeed. Yep. There you go. Um, I reckon they're gonna be a bit rantier than normal. I think we're in a we're in a ranty mood. Um, yeah. Ooh, taking it out on. I'm a bit ranty because some of the mentors. some of the coaches have annoyed me a little bit. Ooh. Um, that I see. Not naming any names. Media. Not naming any names. Don't know any. Don't know any. Um, you know, I've written them all down here. Yeah. You don't I need to read them. You don't need to write them, write them down. But well. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. the. Yeah. That's yeah. the. Um, I'm yeah. No, start, no. Well, let me start with the intro. Go on then. I'm gonna do it. I hope loads of people are watching, and if you are. Tell everyone about it. Come on. But you're not. We can, we, you're not. We can see you're not telling anyone about it. There's no one watching it. The views are pretty low. Yeah. Although maybe it's because, uh, hang on though, let's look at it positively. Maybe it's because people think we're their secret weapon and they don't want to share us. Yeah. That's the way I look at it. Yeah. I, a lot of people have just said that Dan's a weapon. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think that's what they must mean. Yeah, that is what they mean, right? Yeah, that I is, think so, yeah. I think that. I, yeah. I take it as a compliment every yeah. single time. You know? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So uh, what were we talking about? Uh, we're talking about social media. Actually, um, yeah. About yeah. getting 200 views on the YouTube channel, probably. Yeah, probably about that. Yeah. Um, so we're going to come at this from two different angles, I think. The first oh, one... Angle. Come at from the angle. The first one is, I get regularly people sort of say to me, um, Dan, you're a weapon, number one. <laughs> number two. Yeah. Um, I think sometimes coaches ask the question of, um, what do you think about YouTube? What do you think about doing a podcast? What do you think yeah. about Twitter? What do you think about LinkedIn, right? And I'm like, what do you mean, what do I think about it? Mm. That's not the question you're asking. Like most coaches aren't asking the question as in that. They just want to know, they want to get more leads in, right? That's what most coaches are struggling with. They go, I want more people in my business. And they think that they need to add an other, another element of social media. Mm. And their last question is like, oh, do you think, I, you know, what about YouTube? That's, the, that's how they frame it. So what about YouTube? I'm like, what about it? Mm. They think, oh, maybe I should start a YouTube channel. For yeah. what? Well, it's called, you know, been omnipresent these days, you know. It's a new, That's you know, new quiz show. Thought of by <laughs> Mike Harrison. So in brackets, always in brackets. So um, in joke there. In joke, know. and if um, you know, you know, and 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 you know, then you get the question: oh, What about a podcast? Well, what about a podcast? Like, again, what what about it, right? And I think that the problem comes from coaches who haven't quite figured out maybe Instagram because that's usually where most people start. So then they think that the trick or that the thing they need to do is shift to another platform. Rather than master that one and get better at that one, they think that they need to move to another one. And I can hand on heart say that if people are not watching you on Instagram, they are not going to watch you on YouTube yeah. and they are not going to listen to you on a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> like if you can't get them on your Instagram. Yeah. It, it, it does baffle me that, that there's this thought process of like, rather than focusing on one thing and getting really good at it, diversifying and just being shit at all of them. Yeah, it, um, it's it's a bizarre little phenomen phenomenon phenomenon uh, that occurs where um, you'll be coaching somebody um, every week that we yeah we every coach week them. yeah yeah not every week though yeah every week yeah um, for now <laughs> for now yeah, for now until we uh, turn it into a mentorship and uh, yeah. make it you know make you make it so you can't get out so yeah and uh, never talk to us so never talk to you, you no yeah. but you've still got to keep paying your money yeah well, yeah. Um, what was I saying? What did I start saying? Social media. That's Being it. Omnipresent. That's what you were talking nah, about. That was Being before. Ever... <laughs> what was I saying before that? What did you say? Let's rewind it back. Can we rewind it back? Have a look at it. No, you would say it. I can't remember what I said. Ah, there we go. I know what I said. It came in just like that. Um, so it's this weird phenomenon, phenomenon where, where yeah. coaches will will uh, will will get some some clients in through Instagram, whatever. Uh, sure, and. Um, They'll, they'll lose a couple. They'll lose two or three. And then then for some reason, the idea is to start something new. Mm. Like, as though the current as method though, isn't now working. As though those left because they went, you haven't got a YouTube channel, yeah. so I'm, I'm going. You, it's yeah. so bizarre. Yeah. It's like, you, you could, let's just pick, pick out a number. You could be at 30 clients and, um, and lose two or three of them. And go, oh, I just need to... Just, change something should I do I'm thinking about doing something else a member site or a podcast yeah. and you're just like no I, no they also they also start doing the oh I don't think I'm giving them enough I don't think I'm giving my, my people I need to create loads more documents I need to give them recipe packs I need to give them all this sort of stuff right no. in all my time of coaching I've never we've never given anyone a recipe pack never in our lives no. we, we do or we've done alright 
yeah. out of it. And I think that... No, oh, we haven't though, because there's two of us. Oh, I didn't count if there's two of you. Yeah, you can't count can't it if count there's two, apparently. Two. Oh, he's cheating. Cheating. When he's you, sort of, it's cheating sort when you combine them, isn't it? Sort of cheating when it's sort of two cheating. Of it, so. It's kind of why it works, though, because there's two of us. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Wouldn't work, would it? Wouldn't work, really, would it? Biceps and nothing. No, yeah. That, well, you know. half the time it is, but <laughs> <just saying>. <laughs> <laughs> um, It's like, I, I, don't, I don't understand this concept again. It's like, okay, so you gained most of those clients doing it this way, but then you lose a couple and you go, oh, I've got to change it now. Yeah. So, and you look at it the wrong way. You look at it as the... 18 that are in right versus the three that are left. And I always, and I've started doing this a lot recently with, with, with coaches I work with and it's worked really well is flipping everything back to them and using like a nutritional analogy. Imagine if you had a client come to you, right? And say, I want to lose fat, gain muscle, run a marathon and do a powerlifting competition at the same time. You would go, well, you're fucking mental. Like pick one, right? And in most people, the play, in, in the play, you know, the, the state they come to you in, right, would need to lose body fat first, right? Most of them would need to do that first. And most of them do that, lose 20, 30 kilos, feel incredible. From that point, you can then go, right, they might want to do maybe more CrossFit. They might want to do more powerlifting. They might want to do more cardio. They maybe want to focus on their sport performance. They might get given more calories, right? You fundamentally change the plan because they've mastered fat loss. Yeah, you add something on, you add another layer to that, right? Yeah, I just did, I was really Dave Brown yeah. on it, yeah. yeah. Once they've mastered those habits and those things become second nature, you add another layer on top, which is exactly the same with social media. Don't add YouTube, podcast, Twitter, whatever, until Instagram is a habit that you're doing five, six times a week without fail. You're on stories every day without fail and you're getting clients through it without fail. Then you add another layer on if it's worthwhile for your strategy but what a lot of coaches are trying to do is the equivalent of a powerlifting meet run a marathon lose body fat and gain muscle all at the same time and they're fucking up all of them i i've got i've got feeling theory it'll get you less clients just saying yeah the reason being is that if you're not absolutely teaming with clients let's just say um and you're in need of clients why would you distract yourself by trying to start other platforms, by trying to start a YouTube channel. Doing a YouTube channel is very, very tough. We make it look easy. Sure. Sure. Yeah, you know. sure. Um, <laughs> you know, count the views. There's yeah. over 200 on there. So, um, no, 200. but it's like, it's not, it's not easy. Doing a YouTube channel is not easy. Like doing, a t a, uh, starting a whole new TikTok account and, do, and putting out um, content on there. Again, not easy. Starting a podcast and keeping up with that is not easy. These are all hours that you're taking away from just making your Instagram content better because Instagram is going to be your primary source of leads. That's it. Like at the moment, as it stands, that's going to be your primary source of leads. If you're going to diversify anything from the get-go, it would be start an email list. Mm -hmm. If you're wanting to capture people's attention away from social media, do a little bit more longer format content, an email list is the easiest, quickest way to, to be able to do that because it takes five minutes to set up a landing page, I think. Not that I know. Um, don't do it. It'd take you 50 minutes. Yeah. But 50. 50 is generous. Yeah. So I'll take that. It'd take me 50 minutes or the average idiot five. Um, and, and, then you're, and then you're away and you can start sending out your first emails even before you actually and need a lead capture because you can use the emails as, as its own lead capture. Then you don't need to worry about what camera you have in, what kit, what you're going to do, what, what you're going to film each thing, the lighting's right, the editing and so on and so forth. Like Dan said, you do that once you're full with clients, if you want to then branch out and, and use um, a different platform, i.e. a podcast or um, or a YouTube channel to show more sides of you, then absolutely fine. But I think the biggest problem with it is that c coaches aren't, like I say, good enough at Instagram. They're not mastering it at, at this point. So why would you try and master, you know, something else and another 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 platform um you know the, the coaches we speak to can't have 20 conversations a day with people on instagram like and how are you going to keep up with all these other channels that you've got going on and yeah. it's not as um it's also not as i don't want to say lucrative that's the wrong word but it's not as easy to get views on youtube and podcasts no. and things like that it's, it's instagram is the place you're gonna get the most views on um to get someone to commit and sit down to watch youtube video is a lot harder than it is to get them to watch instagram stories for 10 10, 10 mm -hmm. seconds or whatever it is but like the, the thing that i find funny is that I see a lot of coaches try and do a podcast or try and do YouTube videos and they do it for like eight in a row and then realize, oh, it's quite hard to keep up, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And then they stop. That's even worse. Mm -hmm. When we did YouTube, we were like, right, we're doing this. Mm -hmm. like, we were on it mm -hmm. every week for a good two years. Mm -hmm. I think we did it. Mm -hmm. until, literally until COVID hit, wasn't it? We, that's the only reason we stopped. Um, literally. And 
don't be that person that's like, oh, I'm bringing the podcast back for a second series, third series. Well, that means you gave up and now you've gone, oh, do you know what? I'll bring it back again. Because yeah, it wasn't meant to be a series, series the first yeah. time, was it? It was just a weekly thing. Yeah. All the best podcasts in the world are, from what I can remember and what I can what I know is that they're just done weekly. Yeah. Stephen Bartlett doesn't go, oh, guys, I'm just going to bring, I'm back to season two. Yeah. No, you've just, just done 150 episodes, whatever stupid number yeah. you've done, right? And, it, and, and it's a different example because obviously he's got the time or has he? Has he got the time? Actually, I'd say he's busier than you are. Yeah. Um, and he still finds the time. But, it's that whole thing of it. It just it's just another distraction, and it, coaches need less distractions, not more. Mm -hmm. And I just don't understand the the advice or the concept of just adding more to to their plate when they don't manage what's on there at the moment. No, I just don't get it because you can only diversify your social media when you've absolutely nailed one. In my in my opinion, yeah, that's the way I would do it. Absolutely, like. The I, w I would say 90% of people that are probably watching this, that's exactly the case. There's a couple of instances that I could think of that it might be useful. So just before you do start though, I just want to say about the email list as well. Yeah. Is that the easiest way to grow another social media account is with a big email list because yeah. you send out an email going, I've just started this. Yeah. And you get loads of people straight away. Yeah. So that's another reason. We should send out an email. Maybe yeah. more people show up to this. Show up to this, yeah. Aren't they? yeah. A bit of wash out, isn't it? Yeah. Um, 240 views the only time that I can see where it would be useful to do something like that would be if you've got a really 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 specific niche and it makes it harder therefore to grow on social media because it is so niche specific so I'm I'm literally thinking of one of my guys in particular vegan muscle coach mm -hmm. like very, very, very hard to know how many of his followers are actually vegan. We've polled and tried to survey and so on and so forth, right? One would assume the majority of them. They're not. They're not. Very few. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the theory behind starting a podcast for him is to try to leverage other vegan audiences. Yep. So it wouldn't be a podcast of just him talking or it wouldn't be a podcast of him putting other fitness professionals on there. It would be him probably doing something that was vegan related and branching trying to eat implants probably yeah yeah, yeah. probably probably doing that, that doing it? even more of that but yeah. that's a very very special case and you might sit there and go but you've got a youtube channel and you've got a podcast so why shouldn't I, why shouldn't i do it because we had that when we had 30 40 clients that's mm. when we started it we had more, we had enough clients to do one-to-one -one and we thought, right, so the next goal then from that point was we knew we were like, right, we want to do group coaching, bring all the coaches and, and grow the business and the brand. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Well, you go across the second platform, the third platform. We spent time on YouTube. We used to watch YouTube a lot. So we're like, well, that's where we're going to go. That's where we'll, we'll, we'll spend time. We'll, we'll put all our effort. Um, but we didn't then drop the ball with Instagram. Mm -hmm. It was done alongside that. And again, we, we had the money to pay someone to edit stuff for us, mm -hmm. to post stuff for us, to do things for us from that point of view. So it was worth our time. Mm -hmm. Doing that with 10 clients would have been a complete waste of time. Yeah. And it would, no, would never have worked as well. Um, wouldn't have as many clients to talk about and all that sort of stuff. Same in the podcast. Um, is I, The thing that I find funny about it as well is that I don't believe you directly get clients from YouTube or, or a podcast. You don't no. get a client come to go and like comment on a YouTube video and be like, oh my God, sign up for coaching. It's just another layer that's added to what they already know about you on Instagram. Yeah. And where they'll reach out to you is on Instagram. They'll reach out usually on Instagram, DM you. Again, same with emails to a degree. They don't really reply to an email and be like, oh, I want to work with you. They, they take your emails in, they read them, they digest them. Same with YouTube videos and all that sort of stuff. And then when the time is right on YouTube, uh, on, on Instagram, sorry, when you've turned up enough, they then send you an a message be like, right, it's the right time. You know, I've seen enough of you now. I said, I said that to one of my clients this week. I, uh, he, was, he was a new starter, actually. He said he emailed every day uh, for 10 months, actually. Same as James Smith, coincidentally. Um, every day for 10 months, and he was like, I quit it cause I didn't get anything back. I was like, well, did you track any of, the, uh, any of the clients that you've had sign up in the last 10 months, whether they were on your email list? Because, yeah, you won't have had any people reply. Mm -hmm. But how do you know that they're not messaging you on Instagram and they're on your email yeah. list and something you said in an email triggered them or the fact that they've built up the know, like, and trust quicker yeah. because they've consumed more content from you? So, like, with things like that, it, it's because you're not getting that immediate return of likes, of a share, of a comment, and I love this content, and then somebody messaging you, like, to, to start coaching. You, you're not going to get that. And if that's what you're in it for, 
forget about it. Like you're in it there to, to build greater know, like, and trust. And then obviously to leverage your audience onto other platforms and so on and so forth, right? Um, and so, again, we can go into that on a different video. But um, but yeah, so so like you, you have to be prepared with stuff like that. I just, to, to, I just to just to just get on with it. Yeah, and I think that that so so the lay, the layers it goes in is Instagram number one. That's the first one that you you focus on, in our opinion, right now with everything that's going on. Mm-hmm. Well, I've got a client who's doing really well on Twitter, but again, that it's unique to him. But Instagram, you then would make sure you get an email list alongside that all the time, making sure you're grabbing emails throughout. And after that, it's kind of like much of a muchness as to whether you go podcast, whether you go YouTube, whether you go. LinkedIn or whatever you want to do after that. That's the secondary one and the additional one. But again, you've got to think about what the the point of that is. So the point of YouTube for us is more long form content. So people follow us on Instagram, get the short form stuff, and then we can add more nuance and context because we're on this longer form video. So if they like what we say on Instagram, they'll hopefully follow us over onto YouTube and they will then watch our longer form videos and they get to that know, like, and trust. Same with podcasts is that you put that out there. So basically we're just repurposing this and putting it on a podcast. So that's what we're doing. We're not doing any brand new content for a podcast. Are we doing that? Or are you putting it out on podcast? I've started to, yeah. Oh, have you? I've started to do it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah, you, you yeah. knew that, don't worry. Yeah, downloads it all the time. You're double just, checking. Just double checking. Yeah. Um, so, and, and, that, and that honestly is kind of it. Like, what, we don't need another additional layer. Like, that, that is it. And the amount of time, like I said, coaches spend dilly-dallying around doing fuck all. Mm. It's like, no, just all that time you were going to spend on doing a podcast, a YouTube put it back into Instagram. Yeah. Do two reels a day. Yeah. Instead of your one, do two. Yeah. Like instead of doing 10 stories, do 20 stories, whatever yeah. it is, right? But really go to town on that and become a master of understanding your analytics, your data and all those numbers because you'll find it far easier to grow than a YouTube account, mm-hmm. a podcast, whatever it is, because you'll understand your audience. Mm-hmm. And the best way to understand an audience is to have them on one platform, one platform alone, where you post content. If you post it across all different manners of content, you wouldn't know. It's probably the same 50 people. If you've got 50 views on a video and then 50 view- listens on a podcast and you had an Instagram of a thousand people, it's probably going to be the same 50 people, mm-hmm. right? And you could argue, oh, but that's good then because I'm creating deeper connections with them. I would argue that you can do that on Instagram and your Instagram stories. You should be providing them more content individually and helping them in your DMs. Mm-hmm. You would know who those 50 people are because they're the ones that message you more often, they watch your stories more often, they engage with your content more often. Mm-hmm. So then you should go out your way to go, how can I help you? Like, what's going on? Mm-hmm. What are you doing right now? Yeah. It's 50 people. It's not hard to message them. It's, let's say it is 50. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're the sort of numbers you're looking at. And I think people get so lost in the, it's, the, it's that like shiny object thing, isn't it? It's just looking for things. something different. It's yeah. just, it's, it's the feeling of, I haven't been successful yet, so it must be another way. It can't be me. It's got to be it, the, yeah, the fact the, that Instagram the, doesn't like the, me. Yeah, the, yeah, Instagram doesn't like me, or the, the, I need to go into another platform, or I need to try something new. It is just, just a, the shiny object thing. And something that winds me up a little bit is coaches never have anything planned out. They never have anything to thought out. They, they don't run anything like a business. And like we all know that it's not... In fact, we'll go. Let's go against the grain. Every other business business mentor wants you to feel like you're a CEO. You're not a CEO. You, you fucking you work out of your dining room or whatever. Like you're not a CEO for one. But you should still treat it with some form of consistency. Like that should be the bare minimum that you have your plan and you stick to it. Because the amount I'm going to probably run here, but the amount of people that don't have a clear set out goal and they go after it because they'll see something like a fucking um recipe reel or somebody who's been doing recipe reels that's gone fucking viral yeah. and then they'll fucking make start making recipe reels but they'll do one or two of them oh, man, and mine didn't get as many views yeah because they're doing it every day yeah, they've done it every day year. for a year yeah <laughs> yeah like or they'll look at anything else anything else of someone doing something successful and they go oh, maybe i need to do that it's not the thing. It's not the, the the secret that you're missing. You're not missing the secret. It's the consistency. Yeah. The secret is the consistency. It's not the format. It's not the format of it. It's not whether it's a recipe or a workout video or anything like that. It's not the actual content. It's the consistency of said content done over time. That's what you're missing. Yeah, and the passion for that that content. That's the other thing is that I I, I know clients, I've had clients who say that they've posted consistently for years and they'll, and I'm like, yeah, but it's boring. Mm. 
And it's hard to say that and, and, and probably hard to hear it, but it's because you're not passionate about it. When we did YouTube, we were like two videos a week for a year. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens. 100 videos. We'll know when, after 100 videos whether this is something we can do or not. No coaches are sitting there without doing that on YouTube. No. They're not. And if you are, if you do think we're wrong and you want to go down that route of doing YouTube podcasts and stuff, go and do it. And, but do it ruthlessly consistently with that. And maybe you'll, maybe you'll be okay with it. But the problem is, like you say, they do 10 YouTube videos. Oh, I've only got 10 views in each video. Yeah, you will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you will. Because you haven't got an audience to shout about it to. And also, you're not passionate enough about it because it doesn't come across very well. You're not passionate enough about improving the video quality, the sound quality, the lighting, understanding that. Like, as, as geeky as it sounds, when we decided to YouTube stuff, I went fucking ham on it watching people how too to far. too far yeah i went too far honest to god i went into like, those youtube videos <laughs> he was doing fucking flip you remember like flip ups and like it, the, sorts, the, the it would like do a bird's eye view and zoom in and stuff oh, like that yeah. or we'd, we'd open a door and it was somewhere else it's yeah showing off too much too much but like i went really into it and i was just like oh if we're gonna make these good like let's really look at how you can edit them and using all the software i was good like at that. you were really well. good at them yeah it was great and but that's the level that's really, that was required because we were like, well, we're going to do this. We're, we're properly doing it. We're not just playing at it, like 10 videos and see what happens. And, and like you said, it's that they don't have a plan with it. They don't have a clear direction of going, well, what am I using Instagram for? Mm. What's my main content going to be? What's the mm -hmm. main thing I want to be known for? And on Instagram, we post a lot of stuff that's ranty, that is passionate, that is no bullshit, right? Be you on Instagram. And like, I know people get really pissed off when we say that. Because they're like, well, I am being me. It's like, no, 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 like really you. Like that's stuff that you want to post, but you're scared of posting it. Mm -hmm. That stuff, that's mm -hmm. you because you're scared of posting it. That's why you're scared because you're being vulnerable. You're putting yourself out there. Mm -hmm. Posting a recipe video or a fucking trip around Asda with some snacks because is so easy. Yeah, because someone else is doing it though. Yeah. It's so like, it's because someone else is doing it. It's fucking madness. Yeah. It's and madness. It, but, but it also doesn't make you vulnerable because like you said, other people are doing it. So you go, oh, well, it's just like, yeah. and no, I know it's not going to offend anyone. The yeah. amount of coaches that are so scared of offending someone, it's mental. Yeah. They don't want to offend you know, someone, but they, they, they and I've said this before on, Insta on Instagram, I put a post up saying this. Coaches are more scared of offending someone than they are of being broke. Do you know why? <laughs> Do you know, it's bizarre you bring this up, but I was reading something the other day. and You can read. Yeah, I can, yeah. Oh, okay. I was reading something the other day. It's called um, The Hungry Caterpillar. <laughs> yeah. and um, <laughs> No, I'm kidding. It was one of the Mr. Men books. Um, <laughs> no, I was reading something. And in psychology, uh, people have a deeper fear of public speaking than they do death as a generality. Oh, really? And the reason being is that, it, it's, that it's the fear of being ostracized and alienated and mm. standing out. And apparently, psych on a psychological level, that's deeper on the average person than death is and it and it just plays into exactly what you're saying the fear of standing out yeah on social media the, like that's but then what they it also is. say they want that though do you know they go i want to go viral i want, I want to go bigger I want no, to but, be that. but they don't they think that doing what everyone else is yeah. somebody else that's gone viral they'll then copy them it's like when everyone started doing the talking heads in front of a white wall like james smith oh, james smith's done that so he went viral. No, no, no. That's the one that's going to go viral. That's him. Yeah. That's that taken. You can class that as that's taken now. That's done. Now come up with your own thing. So it's mad that you say that because I do think that people's content is just them trying to fit in, which is the worst thing that you can do with online marketing. Yeah. You've got to stand out. You have to. And you have to do it consistently as well. You have to, have to, have to do it consistently over time. So we had that. We had like our brand values, didn't we? What we stood for, what we wanted to be about. And we just did it. Like, so on one of the previous videos, we talked about like our, our story and where we've come from and stuff. That's what we did all that time. We were just like, and we'd call each other out on it. And we'd say, look, you know, we need to be more like this. We need more like that. And it's the same with this. I believe we're the same now when we're doing more work on helping people with their, their fitness business stuff. We're exactly the same as we were fat loss. Mm -hmm. The topic's changed. But the authenticity, the passion, desire, the way we present it has not changed no, in any way, shape or form. And I think that it, you can probably take a lesson from that in that we are just turning up as we are. Like, and yes, we piss people off. Yes, we get people that don't like us. I just don't give a shit. It doesn't matter. I just don't give a shit. And I think that too many coaches give a shit. And that's why they're not putting their whole self out there on Instagram. And then they think, and I put it put it this way: is a watered down version of your Instagram not doing great? Why is that going to do any better on YouTube or podcasts where it's mm -hmm. harder to grow? It's mm -hmm. harder to grow if anything. But if you are gonna gonna do something like that, and you do think you you want to move away from Instagram, 
be fucking consistent with it. Yeah. And be ruthless with it. I'm talking three videos on YouTube a week. If you're if you're going away for Instagram, you do three a week. Yeah. If you're doing podcasts, do two a week. And, and also be prepared to not have anything for fucking ages. Yeah. Like be prepared to not have anything. Even if you do three videos a week, be prepared to not have anything for a year. I'm not easily. Even, I'm not kidding you. But easily. The, the problem the problem is is that people will do three a week for two weeks and go, I didn't really get anything back. So. Uh. Don't fuck me. That. I didn't get anything back. Fuck off. I uh, I watched it. Have you seen that Elon Musk documentary? It's like a three part. It's quite good. It's on the dodgy box, which is legal here. Yeah, I think. Is it? I don't know. Maybe <laughs> I it is. So <laughs> yeah, it hopefully it is. Uh, I, th- I think it is. You know, there's a guy, there's an app, you know. Yeah, it's fine. I'm not going to name names. You know, <laughs> isn't it? Matt, oh, I slipped out. <laughs> um, they can't get him from that. Um, but um, yeah, I watched, I watched, I watched it and um, it's really interesting, like some of the stuff. Like, he was broke for a long period of time. Like, sleeping on the office floor. Like, broke, broke. Like, working every hour, God sends. Like, just absolutely zero time. Just relentless belief in what he was doing. Mm-hmm. He's does all right now. He's like, done all right, he? He's done okay. For being himself. But, he, like you said, he still gets ostracized. Yeah, you know, some of the big, biggest names to still do. And, yeah, I just think, um, I think we've gone off the topic of what we've started talking God about. God knows. But... It, that's where it comes. It does come from that, though. Again, the social media stuff. Stop looking, at, looking outwardly at other platforms and look inwardly and go, "Am I doing everything I can to a be myself, be authentic, turn up every day, and nail this one platform before I move on?" Mm-hmm. I still have that question. Mm-hmm. Then you'll know whether you should do another one or not. Mm-hmm. End of Don't video. Do it.